Hey everyone, welcome to AI Khaldum. My name is Ali Khaldum, and in this series of episodes, we'll be taking a look at how to curate a data set and be able to push it to Hugging Face so that we can actually train data for a stable diffusion um, and go ahead through and train our model. So in this case, uh, let's see, this one is the Martin Valen data set I created. This is a bunch of images with text correlating to it. We have another one here that I've created, um, which is based on icons. So I have a bunch of different icons here and text correlated to that, to those icons. And basically what we're looking to do is seeing how we can take a bunch of images online and uh, be able to create a data set with them, ones that uh, we've curated. And so we're looking to get selective images to train our model. Now, when we're looking to do this, we can do it in two ways. We can do it based off of styling, which is basically like going with uh, the certain type uh, scheme or the vibe of the image, or we can do uh, specific on uh, each name or product, so based off of each item. So for example, if you had like different characters in a, um, in a TV show or something like that, you can train on individual ones. <coughs> In this case, we're just kind of trying to get an idea of like, well, if we were to get these images, how would we uh, be able to like put them into a data set and be able to upload them on Hugging Face data set? So I've gotten this question a lot and I want to make sure I address it here. Um, so you see over here, this is my profile for Hugging Face. You see over here, I have a bunch of these data sets. And so these were automatically pushed using uh, VS Code and the Hugging Face um, plugins. And so we were able to push that that way. Um, in doing so, what we have to do first is find images. So when we find the images, we can we can find them really anywhere. One of the ones that I did was uh, iOS app icons. So this was one that I recently showed. Um, let's see if we're looking specifically for app iOS icons. Here we can get a good data set. So here's iOS icon gallery. You can see we have a bunch of these, and we can just pull from these, right? So you can uh, click on one and then uh, right click, save the image. Now, some of these may save as WebP, and that's completely fine, uh, but we can change them to a JPEG uh, just through changing the extension. So, what I did for the sake of time is I went ahead and I uh, downloaded a lot of these data sets and so uh, these images. So, we have this one here, icon1.png. Uh, icon 2.png and I saved them, made sure to rename these uh, in a good orderly list. So icon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and so on. And uh, then we went ahead and resized them. And the reason why we resized them is because these icon 1, these icons coming in when we're saving them, they're uh, a large resolution. So something above 256 by 256, that's something that we're going to want to bring down in size. The reason why we want to bring that down in size is because it's going to be easier to train. It's a smaller data set, uh, and it's also going to Im impact our performance. So when we're bringing that down in size, it's going to be re uh, relative to pixel to pixel. There's actually going to be more information there to uh, train the model uh, in a good way. So a bad way would be like having too much where uh, there's like a good gradient between like one red color and the other red color. Well, there isn't much difference in there and we're trying to force the model to pick up on that difference. So <coughs> to really be able to use stable diffusion the way that is advantageous to us, we want to make sure the max we uh, kind of like save our images at is 256 by 256, if not less. So 128 by 128 is also very beneficial. Um, so one thing I did is I actually had ChatGPT go through and write some code for converting these images. So this is code that ChatGPT fully wrote and it was able to take the PNGs that we had and uh, output PNGs that are 256 by 256 as a new height and width and I'll put them directly in this uh, in this directory. So we see over here I added the underscore resized so that gives me this underscore, underscore resized of 256 by 256 well before you see this one is much bigger. This one's actually a 1024 by 1024. So in doing so what we're able to do is uh, reduce these image sizes and then get uh, everything ready for training. So within these 
what I will do next is uh, I take these images, specifically the icon 9 resize, icon 10 resize, and I put them into a new folder so that we can start uh, modifying what we need um, to push them to the Hugging Face datasets. So I've moved everything to this one called data back. When I say everything, I mean specifically the underscore resized images. And then I rename them. So I removed them to the, the underscore resized, have been re moved to here, and then I renamed them as normal icon 1, 2, 3, 4 through 10. <coughs> so now these ones are our small images of 256 by 256. What I've also done <coughs> is I've included a metadata.csv file. In this metadata.csv file, I have added icon underscore one dot png comma ios icon so what that means is that this file name is correlated to this text label <coughs> what this does is now we have something to train our images up against so it's a text to image model it needs text to create an image and thus we're going to give it text to start off on um, if we ever mention ios icon it knows to use this part of the fine tuning for our inference when it comes to creating that image. So <clears throat> in all of these, we've created iOS icons and they correlate directly to these images. So this way, icon underscore five is not a part of the actual fine tuning. It's the image of the icon five that is, not the text. Uh, the text that's being part of the fine tuning is iOS icon. So we have all of these together in this file so, or sorry, in this folder, so in data back, let me just close this so it's less confusing. In data back, we have icon one, one through 10. These are all the resized images. And then along with the metadata.csv file, <coughs> this file will be used to basically make sure that the data set gets uploaded properly. Now, outside of this file, what I have is another file. So um, in this folder, data back, um, outside of it is a data loader.py. This data loader.py actually has code that is supplied by Hugging Face himself. <coughs> so from here you get to actually push everything to Hugging Face. So what I can do is I can just go through here. I'm going to call it um, Ali-FB. That's my profile name. And then iOS underscore icons underscore five. So this will be the new name of the data set on Hugging Face. <coughs> the data set is uh, going to be from this image folder. So I've told it there's an image folder. This, this should not be changed, so you'll have that the same. But the directory will be changed. So it's going to be linked here to data back. And over here, drop labels equals true. So it will drop these labels and be able to push. All right. So what I'll do is I will just play this. It'll go through. And you see here, it's pushing everything to Hugging Face. And there we go. So over here, I can go back to this profile. And what I'll do is I'll refresh. And here it is. So iOS icons underscore five, updated less than a minute ago. And there you go. Um, I'll be uh, showing more parts to this. So uh, follow along and uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks.